Can I hazard a guess that this video is not sponsored by Casper Mattresses? No, it is not, as people are about to find out. Online, there are only like three things that shield my YouTubers and podcasters. Shitty razors, shitty subscription services, and shitty mattresses. In regards to the latter, arguably the king of the online mattress sellers is Casper, which may have something to do with the fact that they sue the fuck out of anybody who gives them a bad review. Allegedly. We've got to put that allegedly in there, it's Matt. Be there. Because you know what? I don't want to get sued by Casper mattresses. <laughs> So that's not actually a joke though. Allegedly is a word you need to use right now. I think so, yeah, to avoid being sued by Casper because as we're about to discuss, um, the reason that they, uh, Casper themselves allege that they, uh, you know, sued or threatened to sue these various mattress review sites, which is something I found out existed while researching this, is not because they left bad reviews, it's because they engaged in deceptive business practices. How do you review a mattress? I think you just sleep on it and tell people how you slept. It just seems strange to review something where you spend the majority of the time on it unconscious. Yeah, I guess, but the, you know what? the reason I don't like mattress reviews, or indeed many reviews, is it's always like really wordy. I don't need to see that. Do you know what I need to see for a mattress review? I want to see the Sims style thing that tells you how much energy it restores by sleeping on it. I want that. I want just like comfort energy restored. Like life now, would be so much easier if everything worked by like food. It, instead of having like calories and stuff, it just says how much food it Yeah, like, it restores your four hunger. food. So there we go. It restores four energy. And that, that way you know, you don't buy the one that restores nine. It's got nine comfort, nine energy because it costs three grand. You get the one that restores six and seven. So that'll, you know what? That'll do because it's two and a half grand cheaper. Did I ever tell you about the time where I was playing The Sims? And I installed every single add-on just to see. And my sim ended up crying every time they went to work. Because in The Sims, one of the stats that can affect your sim's mood the most is room. And that, like, the way you can improve that is like give them a nice room, expensive furniture, lots of light. Things that can reduce room though is when there's like piss or mess on the floor. But I had that the animal update installed. So every time my sim left their house, because there was so much animal piss surrounding the house, their room would plummet to zero and they'd just cry because they were that sad. And it got to the point so my sim to get a promotion, you have to go to work happy to get that. I had to build a corridor out of my house to the door. What, like, like a shielding them from the piss? To shield them from the thing and make them sprint to the car. <laughs> So let's move away from that and discuss these deceptive business practices that Casper alleged. You're probably curious about what they are. Yeah. And the number one thing that Casper took issue with in the cases we're about to discuss is the fact that um, mattress review sites were directing people away from Casper mattresses to other competing mattresses without disclosing that those competing mattress companies were giving their money via affiliate links and things like that. And that sounds fair, and I don't think any reasonable person watching at home would like blame Casper for being annoyed about that because that is kind of immoral like oh go check out this cool thing I gave it a good review without disclosing you were being paid by the company uh, but I would like to point out that Casper themselves did engage in this practice until they stopped usually singling out people who gave them bad reviews as the people to like you know remove from its affiliate program it's so amazing, isn't it? Casper 100% engaged in this practice and then stopped for whatever reason and then got annoyed when the people they were paying to give them reviews stopped giving them reviews because let's get this right out of the way. I'm sure there are plenty of objective people out there who review things fairly, but at the same time, I cannot look at any review where I know there is a direct financial incentive being given to that person to direct people to this product. Like, I don't care how objective you say you are, the moment I find out that shit's going on, I do not believe a word you're saying because like, your, your livelihood, your income is based on keeping that company happy so that uh, relationship continues. But it is a bit rich for Casper to like, you know, get a mourn on about this and act like mardy ass bastards over something they themselves engaged in just because they realised that their competitors wouldn't stop like they did. See, this whole video is dancing around the word allegedly. Yes. What's the evidence for this particular practice? Well, we have the example of a website called Mattress Nerd, which gave a Casper mattress a less than stellar review one time, which resulted in none other than the co-founder of Casper itself, Philip Krim, emailing them to ask them, so, what can we do about this bad review? Which itself, I would argue, is all kinds of unethical, but it's also kind of sad. Oh, well I respect and want you to be objective in your reviews, um, I can't help but feel disappointed that you'd recommend a competitor over a Casper mattress. 
I'm really upset about that. Is there any way that we can like, you know, work this out to give the mattress a better review? And the guy, to his credit, said, no, I'm gonna stick to my guns. I'm gonna be objective in my review. My wife did not like your bed. But for a moment, Brad, let's step out and pretend you're not a big dick YouTube and pretend you're an even bigger dick mattress review man. And you're sat there, uh, and what would you value more? Like, the opinion and love and respect of your wife or $50? Well, I mean... 50, I... It's $50, <laughs> the answer is $50 because in these interviews, like, um, in addition to offering the guy um, a free trip to New York to test out a Casper mattress in a more, I guess, just suitable setting, which I say the best setting for testing out a mattress is your own fucking house, but whatever. Don't read into the fact they were basically offering this guy a free holiday to wine and dine him into changing a single review for a fucking mattress. And when that didn't work, Krim changed tactic and offered the guy more money via Casper's affiliate program. And I don't know what happened next, but I will just point out that almost immediately after this um, uh, email was sent and this deal was reached, that website started giving Casper better reviews. Strange. Weird, isn't it? As soon as like Casper started offering to throw money at the problem, the problem went away. And also, I bet the first thing that guy bought with his extra money was a single bed after his wife left him. <laughs> so that's pretty petty. Yeah, and it's also a bit sad, isn't it? The co-founder of the company, a multi-millionaire at the time, basically writing begging emails because they've got a negative review on a website, asking them, can you please tell your wife to change her review? It's really upsetting. We thought we had a relationship. It's like, no, you're a fucking giant business. I don't care. And then it's even more sad that the guy changed his reviews. <laughs> There's got to be more examples. Like, it can't be an isolated incident. Oh, it isn't, no, because as per usual in these videos, it's just a little bit worse because um, there is another example of Casper just being petty assholes, and that is when they got into an online disagreement with a mattress review website called Sleepopolis. So what was the issue with Sleepopolis? Well, the main issue Casper took was with a small disclaimer Sleepopolis put on every review of a Casper mattress, which you can see behind me, which advised people not to buy a Casper mattress and instead directed them to other mattresses that the owner of that website recommended instead. I mean, I guess I can understand why you might be annoyed at that. But that's that guy's objective opinion that is 100% protected by like the First Amendment and the Magna Carta and whatever fucking other legal doctrine you want to throw in that protects people's like, right to express themselves. So they couldn't take issue with that. So what Casper did instead was they said, well, that's deceptive marketing because he's not telling people that those other matches that he recommends are paying him money via affiliate links. You know that thing that Casper did and also used to get positive <laughs> reviews, right? That was the thing they accused him of. And they took particular issue with Sleepopolis over other mattress review websites doing similar things because Sleepopolis was so popular that when you search for Casper mattresses, they were the first link you got. It's like, Joe, below that link, that's an ad that everyone avoids because I don't want to click it. I don't yeah. want to reward that behavior. The link below that was usually a Sleepopolis review of a Casper mattress, which included that disclaimer saying, don't buy this, they're terrible. They're, they're, they're not worth the money. Here are better mattresses I recommend that are cheaper and you get a discount with my coupon that I'll offer you, which for consumers is a fucking great thing to read. And it's like, I want, this guy obviously doesn't like these things and he's offering me a better deal. I better click that shit. It must have been so frustrating to have seen that. Oh yeah, to be cast for mattress and then go Google search your own company's name and the leading search result for like every variation you can find them. Casper Mattress Review is a singular website that says they suck, don't buy them, buy these ones instead. But there's nothing they can do about that. That's one guy's opinion. You can't sue someone for a fucking opinion. So they try to get him on the deceptive business practices angle. And the guy who owned the website heroically refused to bend to Casper's will and like point blank said, I'm not fucking changing it. That disclaimer staying go and fuck yourself, and the battle raged on in court for years. And the owner of Sleepopolis, Derek Hales, accused Casper of, amongst other things, um, hiring a shady-ass company to destroy his like website's credibility in the eyes of Google by doing a load of bullshit. I don't know how exactly what they did, because I don't understand it, and you can put the a full description below me in the link that I'll send you. But he said, yeah, they did this to make sure that my website appeared lower in reviews. And Casper, that's a complete fabrication. We'd never do anything as shady as that. 
while they were suing a guy ostensibly for deceptive business practices because they didn't like a review he wrote. So how did this court case resolve? Uh, it eventually resolved when Hales got so pissed off he decided, fuck this, and settled out of court, sold Sleepopolis and fucked off. Um, a move I deeply respect for the utter lack of fuck shown. But the story doesn't end yet because obviously now we're left with a website without an owner. And in, after Hales decided to fuck this and fucked off to wherever the hell he is now, enjoying his life, you go dude, um, Sleepopolis was bought out by a conglomerate of mattress review websites. The problem is, the conglomerate of websites that bought out Sleepopolis didn't have the capital to buy it. So do you want to know who put up the money to buy Sleepopolis? Let me guess. Casper Mattress. Casper fucking Mattress. I am not making this up. This is 100% true. Casper Mattress gave money to a conglomerate of mattress review websites who all mysteriously had in the past given its products, like, you know, consistently good reviews, to buy out Sleepopolis. <laughs> and I should point out that in a statement issued by Casper after this news became public that they had no control over the editorial standards of those mattress review websites, but following, like, you know, the purchase of Sleepopolis by this conglomerate, like, you know, funded by Casper, all those negative reviews were taken down and replaced with more positive ones, and that link, you know, that little disclaimer that said, don't buy Casper, was removed and replaced with a voucher for a Casper mattress. <laughs> so you couldn't make it up, could you? God, what a sad fucking company, man. Oh. Am I right in thinking that this article actually hits a little close to home for you? It does, because fun fact, we're a big enough YouTube channel now where we get reached out to my sponsors all the time. And if anyone follows me on Twitter close to that, they'll know that. I point blank tell every sponsor to go and fuck themselves. We have a, a very simple criteria for any sponsor who wants to, like, you know, appear on fa a fact theme video. And that is that you get five seconds. So, for example, the intro we did to today's video would instead be, oh, today's video is sponsored by insert company, they had no control over what we're about to say. And that would be the second rule that I get 100% creative freedom. No pro um, person who's reached out to us for a sponsor will give me 100% creative control, which means that my third my, you know, stipulation almost never gets discussed, which is that I am allowed to tell my viewers at home how much you are paying me so that they know how much you think their time is worth. I've done a bit of research on like marketing theory, just I like it. And there's a great pie chart I remember seeing in a business textbook once, which just breaks down what the most effective forms of advertising are, what encourages people to buy a product the most. It's like, oh, here's like paper advertising, here's internet advertising, radio adverts, um, here's like direct marketing, so people like knocking on your front door, putting leaflets to it, and here's word of mouth, and it's <laughs> with big foot, it's like half the fucking chart. And included in word of mouth is celebrity endorsements because there's a, a weird trend where a parasocial relations with people trust celebrities as they would a friend, so they work just as well as your mate telling you, go watch this movie, which is why I was saying YouTubers are the new celebrities of the day, and that's why marketers want, like, no, tell, tell people our product is great because they see you as a trusted person, if not, like, you know, a friend, for lack of a better word. So they will trust your word as much as they would like their own mother telling them, go play War Thunder or some shit. And I love that concept, but I refuse to engage in it unless I'm doing it in an ethical way, or the way I see it as being the most ethical. And Casper Mattress has reached out to us before, and I gave them the same stipulations I just mentioned now, like, oh, it's a, you get a five-second plug, um, I get to tell my audience how much you're paying us, I get creative control. I said, that's fine. I said, actually, as well, I've got an idea for an article you might want to sponsor, because it talks about your company. Oh, really? And I told them this story, this article said, do you want to sponsor this one? And they never got back to it. It's weird, that, isn't it? Yeah. When you give them the opportunity, you, we'll, we'll, we'll do actually do a full episode on your company. Yeah, we'll do an entire about episode. how shady it is. But at the same time, I think nothing proves that I had complete creative control more than I'm going to spend an entire video talking about how shady your company is and the bullshit you've done to ensure you get consistently positive coverage online. I think, though, the fact that I can't get that deal with any of the people who've approached the channel, up to and including all of the bigger, like, you know, products that people will recognise other YouTubers shilling, says a lot about what the other YouTubers like, are agreeing to. It also says a lot about how little faith companies have in the value, like, how good their product is. It does, doesn't it? If you have to force somebody to, to say it's good, rather than letting them Not even them say it's themselves. good, just preventing them potentially saying anything that's bad.